Okay, hello. The esports world has been set aflame by a serious set of accusations between 100 Thieves, specifically Nadeshot, the owner and CEO of 100 Thieves, and Frosty, the former member of 100 Thieves, who is claiming that Nadeshot and 100 Thieves did not take care of his organization, which was signed to 100 Thieves from 2019 to 2021. And this has taken Twitter by storm. There has been people on both sides, lots of different accusations going back and forth from the organization of, of 100 Thieves being super illegitimate to um, Frosty just overreacting and this not being a thing. So we are going to break this down. You are here because you want the full deep dive analysis on all things esports and marketing, and I'm not going to disappoint you. I'm Devin Nash. I was formerly the CEO of CounterWatcher Gaming before we sold to Madison Square Garden, and I now run an agency called Novo where we connect influencers and brands together to do cool stuff on the internet. So I love issues like this, and I'm going to break this down in full for you. And I think to do that first, we're going to jump into it, and we're going to do that by looking at what started this, and then we're going to look at a timeline. So you can see this set of tweets. from um, This is posted by Jake Lucky, the eSports news extraordinaire. And we're going to bust out our old tool here, the good old notepad. And we're going to establish a couple of things real quick for people who have no idea what's going on. So what's the mob? Well, the mob is an organization of four people that started in the COD community uh, with Nadeshot, like OOG people. And those four people are Frosty, Classy, Mako, and Avalanche. Pretty simple. 100 Thieves approached them in 2019, and they were signed in 2019 of November, and they were with 100 Thieves until 2021 of December, so two years. And essentially... Um, it didn't go well. <laughs> and uh, Frosty, just recently, uh, as of the time of this recording, August 29th, posted this tweet saying that he basically only made sixteen fifty after taxes. They literally had to skip meals because they couldn't afford to buy food. And uh, that it was a nightmare situation where 100 Thieves barely helped them at all, uh, took 95% of their revenue. I should note that he later corrected this uh, and said it was 85%. We're going to talk about that. It's super important. And um, that they basically were stressing about where their next meal was coming from and couldn't really do anything. Uh, and just 100 Thieves didn't take care of them. Nadeshot was not happy about this, went live on Twitch for two and a half hours to respond with 45,000 viewers saying that this was totally wrong. And then Frosty came back and streamed to 25,000 viewers right after it saying that was all wrong and reacted to the video. So who's right? What is going on? That is what we're going to break down today. And uh, I have watched basically everything uh i watched the the entirety of nade shot and frosty as well as like all of the commentary i think i have a pretty good perspective and remember i have been in nade shot's position i i sat on top of an org with 105 people 45 players and i i i have good context into what is going on here so um i can also say things that um that he may not be able to because he is behind currently running an org. I am not. And he has a massive PR team that he has to deal with. So um, you, you may be surprised by where we end up here. Um, so it's going to be real interesting. I think that if we had to summarize where both of their perspectives are, and you want to like start and understand what their perspectives are without watching like hours and hours of content, I always try to make my videos so that this is like the only video that you need. Uh, you can basically summarize it this way. Nade Shot's perspective is everyone has to work in the world, right? The market kind of decides if you succeed or not, and the mob did not succeed. And th we, being Nade Shot and 100 Thieves, gave the, all them the best chance that, we, that they could have to, to succeed. Frosty's perspective is that Nadeshot set false expectations and wasn't really a proper mentor, mentor and couldn't really give them the proper time or preparation or things that they needed to be successful content creators. So who is right? Well, the way we're going to decide is we're going to look over the main contention points of this, um, this whole disagreement, and then, we're, and then you're going to decide. And I'm going to give you my take all the way through. So contention point number one is really the house. Dun, 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 okay? That's what it would happen if I had editing. Like, there'd be a screen that made it sound like that, but I just do these in one take, so. <laughs> right, that'll be relevant later <laughs> when you look at how much uh, these guys got paid as a content budget. Um, the house is 10,000 bucks a month, and the stipulation was, you gotta live in LA. Now, I ran my esports team in LA as well. That is where the center of everything is. So the justification Nate Shot says is, hey, we're going to try to make you big. Keep in mind, like, these are all people that have like 100 to 500 viewers at the time. And so Nate Shot says, you want to make it? We're going to sign you 100 Thieves, but you got to get a house 
within 15 to 20 minutes of my house, the Nade Shot compound. And Frosty's argument is, uh, dude, you can't find a house for less than 10K anywhere. And you can see that uh, here at 230. Well, else. It's valued over ten million dollars, bro. How are we supposed to find a house that's within ten to fifteen minutes of that? That's less than ten grand. It is hard, but several people posted a response to this and found a bunch of different houses in the area. Nade Shot uh, said in his video that you know if you're really hungry for it, you would go and get a house that was two bedrooms, and then you would stream in the living room. And um, <laughs> to which Frosty responded later. This is like an hour 22, and we could we could find it later if we want. Um, dude, we are grown-ass men. Do you expect us to sleep together? Um, and, and and so on the house issue, right, the stipulation by Nate Shot is like, hey, like, you chose a $10,000 house. Um, and it ended up like it was a little bit shaky. Uh, basically, two 100 Thieves employees helped them find a house. Um, they ended up choosing it. Now, I, I was a little bit confused by this because in – so, okay, you're going to hear me go into my esports mode, Okay. I think you, you've got to do everything for players. Like, you can't give them any choices whatsoever. Like, your, their only job is going to be to create good content and to be players. Like, that's what they do. So you want to, like, take all decisions away. I was surprised when I heard that 100 Thieves was like, yeah, go choose your house, go figure that out. Um, it, because, I and, like, the, it wasn't chosen for them. But regardless, like, they had the help from 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves selected this house. They said, cool, we're going to do the, the $10,000. And let's get the payment out of the way because I think that's going to be relevant, like, this entire time. The payment was – so I, I have heard from – so we confirmed that each player on the mob got sixteen fifty after taxes, okay? But uh, – this is confirmed by Frosty. The, the team got $2,500 a month in content budget. Now, notably, this was not on like a credit card or something. They had to go request this from 100 Thieves when they wanted it. So if they're like, hey, I want you know an SM7 – uh, they, they'd have to get that approved. They'd have to buy it with their own money. They'd have to invoice it back. And another um, strange thing that I, I can't like really confirm, but this is from Jacob Wolf, who is really reliable, said that they had $2,500 in living stipend as well. So $2,500 each in living stipend, which I assume is rent. And I haven't heard anybody like refute this or, or, or anything, so I don't really know what the truth of this is. But that's about two hundred and forty k a year, regardless of... Uh, Nade Shot said on stream that each of them was making about 65k a year, to which Frosty agreed with that. So we can go with uh, each player earning roughly 65k a year plus a little more from uh, Twitch and sponsors. Okay, so that's the real situation around pay. Um, and these are the things that we know that are confirmed. The only thing we don't know is like the 2,500 and, and like living expenses are. So they've got a $10,000 a month house. They got to split that between four people. They're each making 1650 AT and they are making roughly like 65 K a year. So a $10,000 house costs about $120,000 plus like utilities and everything to run, like call it like 130,000. If they're each making $65,000 a year, that's $260,000. So, right. You can like, you can, you can do that. Like that's doable. Like, like almost half your money's going into rent, which kind of sucks. Um, really sucks. But without any other expenditure, like you got to buy food, I guess, and everything like that. Like you can kind of make that happen. It's tight for sure. Um, but Dane Shot's point is they chose the house. They should have. They should have basically gotten like a two bedroom place um, and streamed in like a living room or like a basement. Because you're gonna see like this is where you start to see like this contention, and you kind of have these two sides come out. A lot of people that are on Frosty's side are like, man, the 100 Thieves should have done better to take care of these players. Like, they, they should have, uh, you know, you, you can go look at, like, some of the, the Twitter comments, and there's some people that are like, um, damn, like, why didn't, like, 100 Thieves, like, put more into the, um, uh, like, Frosty kind of has a point. You're a huge brand name, 100 Thieves. You barely pay your people 60K in LA. The economy is shit. That barely goes anywhere. So there's some people that most of the people are kind of taking Nade Shot's side on this, at least on this hashtag. But, like, there's some people that are coming out and saying, like, hey, like, that's not enough money. Like, you can't live on that. And to, to which I would respond, um, I'm, I, I'm more on the side of Nade Shot here than I am on Frosty's side. I, I, I think you – a lot of what you're going to see here is – this um, this sort of infatuation with being on an esports team and like getting that lifestyle, 
And Nate Shot mentions in his response video how many creators he saw that would get signed and then their content would just drop off the roof, right? They would just stop producing stuff. And we're going to get into the stats a little bit later uh, because I love stats. But um, safe to say that that is, is more or less what happened here. And, and, and certainly, like, if you're not... Now, I, I wonder what the responsibility that Nate Shot had like, because like when you're on an esports team and you're you're you own an esports team, you really are hyping these players up a lot. Like, hey, you're gonna join 100 Thieves. This is gonna be a big deal. Like, this is this is your ticket. And and to Frosty's point, like, the, Frosty was very excited about going out to uh with with the mob to LA, and he thought like this was his chance. So um I don't know what the onus was on 100 Thieves to to like educate the mob on like the reality of it because. I don't know if the language they use behind closed doors is like, look, you're going to have to grind. Like, this is what we can pay you. You're all streamers who are making have like 300 concurrent viewers. Like, you're not making money for the org. So we're going to see where you're at in a year. You guys got to cut expenses. Like, we're going to give you the opportunity, but it's all on you. Now, Nate Shaw in his video says that he said that, okay? And Frosty didn't like really um, refute that. Um, but Nate Shaw later says in the video that that they basically just did not work hard enough so let's uh let's like let's like, let's like go check that out real quick so that's at uh Grand. 107 okay you guys saw any so, like you know hire somebody to be head of production to, maybe that gives them a good kick in the ass or a good kick in the right direction but we just couldn't we couldn't give them any more resources after all the time that we had been spending trying to get them to see the light Bro, like, I'm gonna keep it a buck. My YouTube videos when I did upload would get, like, maybe 2,000 views. Okay, I, I wasn't... And we can see here, too, on, like, 122. Like, again, this kind of claim, like, he just didn't put in the classify. work. We tried to work uh, uh, besides him. classify. I, I, when, when, when everything happened with the mob, I talked to Classy. And felt like, he was working his ass off. What's happening here today? But... So Nate Shot basically says here I, I, that only Classy really believe. put in the time. And you can, for tonight, I know that we put our best foot forward and we did everything we could to help these four individuals who I... But it comes down to putting in the work, right? Provide them a platform. And that might be best explained in this clip right here. Why it is that it panned out the way that it did. But if, if, if you really want to go look at stats and you really want to look at the work that was done while we're bringing these deals in while we're paying these salaries and while we're supporting them as much as we can with the employees that we have the resources that we've created for ourselves and the pat platform that we you know we have built along with our community th that mentality that we had back in the day where you eat what you kill they 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 weren't uploading and you know, we, you know, six months into this, this relationship, a lot of our staff who haven't come from, you know, the world of content and esports and these the organizations that I've seen and go and were a part of back in the day, they were frustrated. They, wa they, they, they wanted to move away from the mob after the first year, and they were talking about it six months before the rest of the time. So if you go look at this, then Frosty basically responds to this and says this is completely untrue, right? Um, he, he responds... Uh in his VOD here. So this brings us to, to section number two, which is the work, who put in the work and what happened. We're gonna look at like Frosty's response more or less to this is over here. In a negative way. to be fair because classify. So we already saw this. We so. we could internally to keep them around. So he's kind of reiterating what he said earlier. Just, that's just not true. So he's when saying, no, Frosty we did put in the work. Not, I don't. They, he specifically, I got to stop talking about everybody. He specifically did not take full advantage of the opportunity. All right. So he you know, specifically he not did not take full advantage of the opportunity. So is that true? So they all have been arguing back and forth on stats. And we over here on this channel are the masters of stats. <laughs> so we gathered, uh, thanks to Raxa for helping me out with this in the Discord, uh, we gathered the streaming hours for the two years that they were there and the total number of videos, and here they are. So, Frosty in two years streamed uh, 955 hours. Classify streamed 2,000. 
Mako streamed 505 and Avalanche streamed 589. Now, why is this important? Because Nage, one of the core contention points that they, they both have is that uh, Nade Shot basically said, hey, you didn't stream enough. Frosty said, well, I was streaming with other people. I was streaming on other channels. Oh, and they also have a, um, a channel that's called The Mob and that streamed for 104 hours, I believe. So this is over two years. So this might look like a lot of hours, but let me break this down for you per week, okay? This is how it's broken down per week. Frosty streamed roughly nine hours a week. Classy, Classify, streamed 19 hours a week. So to his credit, that's a part-time job. Mako streamed 4.8 hours a week. Avalanche streamed 5.6, and the Mob channel was live a total of 1.1 hours a week. But what about YouTube, you say? How about that? Well, we found 33 videos. Now, Frosty says that some of these videos are private, um, but uh, I couldn't find those. The Mob channel, which is listed here, posted 33 videos between 2019 and 2021 over a course of two years, which is a little bit um, less, a little bit more than one video a month, uh, but, but a little bit, or a little bit less, right? 24, 12, yeah, a little bit more than one video a month. So um, this one, contention point number two, uh, 100 Thieves wins, <laughs> 100%. Uh, they absolutely did not put in the work to be sufficient content creators um, at, with these kind of time frames. Now, if you watch other Devin Nash videos, you'll know that it is very hard to grow on Twitch. And I will usually, when I say that, put an asterisk sign and say, if you have the opportunity to collaborate, then you can grow on Twitch. And man, did they have the opportunity to collaborate on 100 Thieves. So Nade Shot is kind of coming from like the old guard, like lumberjack in the woods, wooden house. I built my house from the dirt and I slept on a bed of nails for five years with like seven other esports people. And if you don't put in the work, um, you know, I've got no sympathy for you. I mean, I'm like paraphrasing what he said, but you listen to the clips and that's more or less where he's coming from. And Frosty's like, man, like you set the expectation that we were going to come out here and be superstars. Like what, where were you? Right. As Frosty says, nature didn't come to the house for four or five months and, and then to only do a house tour. Um, and, and so like what really happened here? Well, let me give a little bit of background. When I started in esports, I was a volunteer for a team named Team Dignitas, okay? And, and Team Dignitas at the time was owned by one dude named Odie, a British bloke who was a badass, still is, and um, gave me a shot. And now I didn't earn a single dollar because they didn't have a dollar to pay. It wasn't Odie's fault. We just, that's what esports was. And I showed up in Los Angeles taking a flight down that I paid for, and I, I, I ended up in a house with Kiwi Kid. And, and 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 crumbs and <laughs> and all the boys okay from the OG Dignitas and I like I'm a cutie pie like all those guys and they were like what what do we do now and I'm like I don't I don't know okay and from that I like got a sponsorship got myself paid moved to NA like manager and like that that was my story right so I vibe really hard with the idea that like you have to put in the work like a content creator getting given the opportunity to join a hundred thieves, move to Los Angeles, get paid enough to pay rent. Like if, if you're really hungry on that, you would be doing everything possible to make that happen. And this is where I really side with a hundred thieves. Like there's going to be some issues later on in this video where that I do want to bring up. But man, like, I don't think any of these people, even Classify, who worked hard, he uploaded videos on his own channel. He had like 20 videos on his own channel, streamed about 20 hours a week consistently. Um, he was really trying and, and, and saw that success. I, I, I mean, like, the amount of time that you need to put in to, 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 to be able to succeed, it's an all in thing. It is like 12 to 14 hours a day. Like, nine hours a week doesn't cut it. Now, Frosty will say on his tweet that for the first, first four months, we didn't have internet uh, or couldn't support more than one streaming person at a time. Fine, but we're looking at numbers across two years, right? Um, so this just, this is, these are spanning over two years. They just didn't put in the work. That's it. Uh, there's, there's, there's absolutely no um, and if or buts here. Now, in addition to that, they also got a $2,500 a month content budget. Now, again, to the mob's credit, they had to get this approved, right? They had to go to 100 Thieves and say, hey, like we want X, Y, and Z. So um, one of the kind of core arguments that Frosty had was like, we couldn't afford um, 
to make YouTube videos, right? So you can see that here. Where is our, uh, where's our video? At 12 minutes, he says that. So let's go there. I could not afford to spend $500 on a YouTube video, say, and then wait three to four weeks to get that money back. I... Okay, so take it from a guy <laughs> that does all of his videos in one take. <laughs> 50 minutes long. <laughs> you don't need $250 or $500 to make a YouTube video, okay? It's just not a thing, right? Like, like, I, like I, 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 I basically get more views than any of these videos, right? And I, I do this as like a literal like part-time thing. So this statement was crazy to me. That, that they're like, okay, well, I can't spend $500 on a YouTube video. Why are you spending $500 on a YouTube video? Just upload highlights or pay an editor like 50 bucks a video or whatever. If you have $2,500 $2, a month is more than I have ever spent on this channel i think in one month <laughs> i don't i don't know if i i don't think i've i don't think i've ever spent in in the, in the history of this youtube channel that's that launched in 2018 or something i don't think i've spent 2500 dollars total i don't know i mean I, i've paid editors and, and stuff like that but maybe like i've gotten close to it certainly not like two or three months that is a ton of money so we have to like there has to be some personal ownership here and like if the mob is is watching this video um because i think they might uh the, the, i know that they follow me um, the best thing you can, you can get from this point number two, and don't worry, like keep watching, like I'm going to come to your side on some stuff. Like, but the best thing you can do is like really take a step back and be like, okay, I might've blown an opportunity here. I really could have put in the work. And, and like, look, you, you might've been set up to believe that Nade shot was going to be there. Like he was going to mentor you. He was going to teach you the ropes. He was going to make you into a big YouTuber like, and I don't know what the language was behind closed doors. I do know that esports teams have a habit of really encouraging content creators to join them because they like, like they're talking them up a big game and saying they're going to be huge. So maybe there was some language there. If there is, that's on Nate shot to some extent, but the expectation was that you have to put in the work and ultimately the market decides nobody is going to be responsible for your success, but you all things considered, 100 Thieves gave a phenomenal opportunity to Frosty and the team to come out to LA and be able to do this. Man, like how many people that, that, are, that are OG esports folk like myself that couldn't even imagine for a 300 viewer stream having the opportunity to go out to Los Angeles. Like, like, like a lot of people would have taken that for free. A lot of people would have taken that and, and, and just and just like found a way. Like they would have like gone to a bank and got a loan or whatever. Like that's a lot of money to pay players with no expectation of return. If Jacob Wolf, if the Wolf is right, and that's 240k per year that the team is spending on you, plus like human resources that that they admit. I mean, this there's no excuse for this kind of time. And you know, you can go into the timeline and you can kind of see like a lot of people are showing this image, which this is apparently an image of like Frosty's room. And, like, I've got to agree that, like, this doesn't really look like a person's, like, kind of going hungry. Like, this this pretty much, I would believe that this picture is right because this pretty much kind of adds up to, like, the rooms that I saw at Counter Logic Gaming. There's a lot of drinks here. There's a lot of, like, McDonald's and a lot of, like, Chipotle and stuff. But it pretty much adds up, right? Like, <laughs> you got a light, like, a streaming setup with, like, a C910 Logitech. Okay. Like, you could you got to do everything it takes to make it happen. Like having your own room in, in, in like in esports, this is one of the reasons why it sounds so crazy to a lot of the OGs that, that like Frosty's even complaining B because like for me, right. When I was at, at team Dignitas, we had a house with five people in it. I slept on the couch for three months, right? Like, and, and I just didn't have a bed and, and actually I'd never had a bed. <laughs> I don't think I ever had a bed when I stayed there. Is that right? I had a bet if like somebody was out or something, you know? Um, sometimes I slept on the floor, I, like hurt my back. That, like a lot of people, like we we like dug our way up. So I just think there's like a set of expectations here that is like false where it's like, okay, like you didn't like help us enough. And, and, and like, again, like there's something to be said about like what Nade Shot like could have done a little bit more. This is like the head of like a multi-million dollar organization with investors and LPs at this point. He has so many projects. He has so many expectations that um, I, I, I think Nadeshot went out of his way 
to give a real opportunity to these folks, and they definitely didn't capitalize on it. So I'm definitely on Nate Shot's side on this one. Okay, let's talk about um, the sponsorship one. This one's really interesting. Contention point number three. So um, we're just going to get this straight from Nate Shot because um, there's like an argument between the um, – the uh, nine, the eighty five percent and the ninety five percent. I gotta find the uh, the quote here. Here it is. I have an email that the key terms of these deals that we bring to the mob, we would retain eighty five percent of revenue. We did three deals for them, and all th two out of the three deals, they took home sixty five percent of the revenue from that deal okay 65 percent of the revenue from that deal so uh apparently these deals were fireball el gato and i don't know uh so fireball was a deal that paid out 30k to each person now frosty's claim is that um he basically brokered that deal himself but that he had to give it to 100 thieves um you can see that here this is the same clip. I have an email. Yep. Okay, so we're actually looking at um, 13 minutes here on the percentages. 100 Thieves did not bring that deal to us. I took that deal to 100 Thieves. Referring to the Fireball deal. The Fireball deal. Yeah. I was friends <laughs> with the guy who ran the company that brought them the deal or that brought me the deal he messaged me he's like yo i got a deal with fireball that they want to work with you guys blah 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 and i was like yeah sure that'd be great but the problem is they wanted some statistics that we weren't able to provide them so i went up to 100 thieves i said hey we got a deal working with them they want to talk to you guys about working with us like can you work it out and provide them the statistics that we don't have okay so for him to say that like they're the ones that like brokered that deal and did all this for us like that that's that's cap so cool um i don't know what the truth is there apparently they didn't uh, apparently they took a uh, hundred thieves took um eighty thousand dollars of this deal and its total deal value if that's true um and uh, so there's a total of one hundred twenty thousand dollars, but it was a two hundred thousand dollar deal uh 30k paid to each person uh if that's true and uh frosty brought it to them then that's kind of weird now i i haven't seen anyone talking about this and i kind of want to bring this up um so let's go back to what Nate Shot said. They had a contractual agreement for 85% of sponsorship revenue to go to 100 Thieves. That's a lot of money. That, that, that's, that's, a, that's a ton. So, so usually, uh, like at CLG, to give you another perspective, at CLG, like, like, like so 85% means 15% 15 of the money that is received from a sponsorship is split between four people. Like, that's nothing, right? So they're not going to make any money off sponsors. The justification was, hey... Um, you guys are growing, um, and uh, we need to kind of like make some revenue off of you somehow because we're paying you like total 240k a year to, to do all this. Um, we're going to take 85% of sponsorship revenue. Now, I, I kind of understand that, but uh, contractually, like that does bring up to me like the sort of like phase feeling of like, t I, I do not like the idea of taking these huge percentages of, of, of revenue from sponsors. I do understand that the that the the company needs to recoup its its money in some way, but I never went above twenty percent at CLG, and to this day, like running an agency, I don't do deals above twenty percent. It, it it feels like, um. But then I I, I think about like I, I'm split on this one because like how would a hundred thieves otherwise recoup its cost from these individuals because they're not taking Twitch streaming revenue. Um. If you also go to fifty three minutes here, there's another really interesting point here, where Frosty basically t explains that. They were exclusive to 100 Thieves, which all people that signed to were. Another problem with that is that, you know what, fine. Like, we were okay with taking that at the time because, like, whatever. They're giving us the opportunity. We can, we can forego some sponsorship deals, right? Like, we can always get our own sponsors. The problem with getting our own sponsors is that while we were in 100 Thieves, we were not allowed to have any agents or managers. So this is true. You're going to see this happen basically with all esports orgs. And, they're, like, essentially an esports org is an umbrella for an a, a, an umbrella agency that they're they're going to basically sign you exclusively and they're going to use your viewership numbers to try to sell sponsors that's the game that every esports org plays 
I've always had a little bit of an issue with this. It's one of the reasons why I transitioned into being an agency. So now the company I run is like an actual agency. Why not just like be an agency? If like if you're an esports team and you know you're basically set up the same way, except you, your players are also competing. Um, this is kind of interesting. Which I don't know like how the laws work with all that stuff. Yeah, it's but shaky. There's some funky shit going on there. Because as well, when we were in talks with the agent to assign to an agency, okay, we got put into the big business board meeting room. And John Robinson had a talk with us, and it wasn't like direct, you're not allowed to have agents, like blah, blah, blah. But it was very like subtle and manipulative, right? It was, you know, oh, listen, guys, like our relationship with you guys are so good. And, you know, like if you guys signed to an agency, we'd have to go through them. And it would just like, it would really strain and damage our relationship with you guys. Basically implying that like if we sign this agency, we're not getting re-signed. So that's that's a, this is a really interesting thing, right? Like, um, I've I've actually heard like a, a variation of this language. I actually kind of completely believe this happened, <laughs> where like they were basically put in the back room and said like, "Hey, yeah, like we want to be your agency." Now I cannot get a straight answer on the laws here. Um, there's a thing called the the Talent Arts Association, the TAA, that's in California, where all these places are incorporated, and and there's like some idea of like what talent is. My understanding that you'd have to go to like esports law or like some of these like like um like Ryan Fairchild, some of these like more sophisticated people, um, or maybe maybe Hoag Law could do like something covering the segment. But like th there is some question as to like what talent means and if these esports organizations can like safely hold on to these players as talent. Like you could if you were like an NBA team. Um, the, the state of California doesn't like recognize esports players in the same way, uh, although like the federal government does in weird ways. Like we were able to get like P1A visas for um, and sometimes exceptional player visas for people that under the same thing that like a traditional sports player would be if we had to fly them out to like Korea or France or something. So like this is a weird, weird th area. But the exclusivity thing always bothers me. There are always situations, and in fact, the big point of contention in this whole argument is that um, there was a, they had a G Fuel, the mob had G Fuel as an energy sponsor, uh, energy drink sponsor, where they were making like most of the revenue from. But I believe that 100 Thieves at the time was sponsored by either Rockstar or Monster. They they couldn't um, they couldn't make that work because once you join the org, right, you can't have a conflicting sponsor because all of these uh, contracts have what's called lockout clauses, meaning that like if you are sponsored by a certain energy drink, you can't get sponsored by other energy drinks, right? Like like that's that's called a category lockout where you just you you like if I sell one of my talent on the um, energy drink category for Monster, I can't get them a, a, a G Fuel sponsorship. If I sell them a Logitech sponsorship for mice or keyboard, we're not going to be able to get them another mice or keyboard. Like That is locked out for the duration of that contract, meaning that a lot of people that are talent that get absorbed into these organizations like the mob are unable to continue their sponsorships and then have to give 85% of their future sponsorship revenue to 100 Thieves. So the trade-off here really is we're going to pay you. We're going to hope that you get huge. We're going to take a ton of your sponsorship money if you get huge, and we're going to pay ourselves back. That's the business model. I don't know if I agree with it or not. Um, on one hand, I, I I don't like that they're, they're taking such a huge percentage. On the other hand, you got to recoup 240. It's a business, right? You got to recoup 240k. And like Nate Shot seems like he really went out on a limb for these people and kind of knew the ROI wasn't there. You have to keep in mind that Nade Shot at this point in 100 Thieves is accountable to many more people than just he, um, than just himself or his organization or his employees. He has tons of families he's supporting. He's got LPs, right, that are, that are investors that are expecting certain returns. So if he is going to make a decision on behalf of 100 Thieves, he's got to get that money back somehow. So he put a bet on the mob and said, look, we're going to make this back in terms of your sponsorship revenue if you, uh, if, if you can't do it. Um, then, you know, we got to reevaluate that. And year two comes along, and they couldn't do it. So overall, I, you know, I, I, I'm mixed on this one, um, but I don't see how they could have recouped that money at the end of the day. So I kind of side with 100 Thieves here as well. Um, and uh, I, I, that's just kind of where I end up, right? And now let's like kind of like look at like the two perspectives. Number four, right? We're going to go back to here and... Um, Look at the perspectives on both of these. Okay. So let's start with um, Frosty's p perspective here. And um, I'll see if I can like, – I might not be able to – I have so many notes. Um, I might not be able to find exactly where – nope, just kidding. I did. 134, 57. And we're going to get into, like, the real reasoning behind this. But before we do – 
That's right. We are 34 minutes into a Devin Nash video, which means if you are still here, you are one of the few people interested in deep dives and analysis on the New Media World. Uh, congratulations. Thank you for being here. Leave a comment and let me know you're still here. I love the people. The last one was so excited. I went through all of the people. We had a 26-minute secret shout-out. This is the 34-minute secret shout-out for y'all that are still here. Thank you very much. Um, two things, real quick. Number one, if you like videos like this, I can't imagine why you would, but if you do, go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Devin Nash. We have over 70 videos there for five bucks. Uh, that, that's not, this is videos I upload like every week on different topics around business and meta market, mar, the meta and the market marketing stuff and things like that. Um, so go there, support it, five bucks if you want. Uh, number two, if you're a creator, uh, an influencer, go check out our completely free platform. It's called Novo Nexus, nexus.novo.tv. You'll see a link in the description down below. You can sign up for it for free and get offered uh, brand deals and sponsored deals. You do not need to be exclusive to us. There is no BS. It's like, so there's no percent, no percent bullshit, nothing like that. You just get offered deals and uh, it's, it's that simple. So go check that out if you're interested. And that's it. Thank you for supporting the videos and subscribe if you feel like it, okay? We're getting into it, the real reasoning. So here we go. But the barrier of entry is much, much lower than what people actually believe and what is actually true. Content creation is the same way. And that's why I wanted to bring up Optic earlier because like I said, we weren't making money. A lot of you guys know this about me. And again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I think it's important. I was, I was going to community college and I was working full time, minimum wage. I quit all that, which was probably really irres irresponsible at the time, but then we moved into Optic House. Me, Big Timer, Merck, Scump, and Hector. We weren't making any money unless we made it for ourselves. We were happy to be a part of Optic, and it gave us an opportunity to be bigger than we were. People that joined FaZe back in the day, they had FaZe in their, 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 their gamer tag. Kind of like they made it. And now we're gonna go talking about like the OG days and like how so hard they worked, right? It just really sucks when I know Frosty knows that I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been in his situation before. Yeah, bro, that's like that's why I'm so pissed off about it. Because you knew, here's the crux of the knew issue. about our situation. And you barely did anything to try to help. All right, so that's that's kind of like the 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 gist of it, right? Frosty's perspective. False expectations wasn't really a proper manner and didn't give us the time to do anything to help. Is that true? Okay. Well, we looked at the stats. We saw that they could have worked a lot harder. We saw that um that that, that that like the house is like a contentious issue. I'm willing to believe they got pressured into that or whatever. Or like maybe it's not entirely their fault. Um, but even so, they had every opportunity with like the t with like the amount of money they were given and the opportunity they were given, the proximity they were given to 100 Thieves to really take the initiative and work. And I think, um, with all due respect to the mob and and, and the people involved, they got caught up in the sort of like esports player lifestyle, which is easy to do. Um, and they kind of came at it from the perspective of like, hey, like we're on 100 Thieves, we can make it. Like this is amazing. We're getting paid. It's it's everywhere to go but up from here. You know, uh, Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> and you can't do that. Like, now maybe, now like, was, did Nadeshot set false expectations? Like, did 100 Thieves set false expectations? I'm sure there was a lot of hype talk at the beginning about how awesome they were going to be. But, you know, to Nadeshot's credit, who, who and, and this is a person I have to say that I respect a great deal. I think that Nadeshot created an esports team unlike any other. Um, and, and I've made videos before about how incredible as an organization 100 Thieves is. Many of the people that I've worked with in esports have moved to that organization. So uh, I'm a fan of what 100 Thieves has done. Um, I think it's well with I, I think it's well within Nate Shot's like purview to, to to probably at some point have said like, hey, this is like we're gonna have to really put in the work. But I don't know. Here's where I'm gonna have to have like a couple hot hot takes. Like from Nate Shot's perspective, like you know, he dug himself out of a middle-class family to become a multimillionaire, to have partnerships with the top people in the music industry, to get LPs to give hundreds of millions of dollars to his organization, to build a compound in Los Angeles, and to build an apparel line and a content team that is second to none in 2022 and 100 Thieves. This dude put in the time. He has an expectation from every, as most successful people do, he has an expectation from every, like, to, to just that every single person needs to do the same thing. And the market ultimately decides if you succeed or fail. By which I mean that, like, the audience is going to decide if my videos are good and people want to watch them, they'll watch them. If they don't, they don't. Nobody can come in here and give me that opportunity. Basically, everything that you have to do in your life is going to be on your own. And anything else you get, you've got to be grateful for and you've got to be lucky for. Unfortunately, um, 
I, I, I think there's this mentality in esports that uh, f- with some players, and I don't want to speak for you know ev- everybody on the mob because I don't I don't know any of these people, right? Um, so I'm just speaking in general across esports. There's a mentality that um, you 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 can make it big as a content creator on a team or as a streamer, you know. And 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 I, I just want to put in perspective. You watch any of my other videos about Twitch, about YouTube, about what it takes to be a content creator, right? I, I go so into depth about what it takes. And so few people, right? Like 5,000 people total out of the 2.6 million people that click the start streaming button, 5,000 will make minimum wage. It's nothing. If you get an opportunity, like going to 100 Thieves to create content, that is a once in a lifetime thing you need to be working 80 hours a week if you want it. And now there's going to be some people that are like, well, like they should have taken, this is a multi-million dollar corporation. Um, they have all this money. They have all these resources. Why couldn't they help these folks get off their feet and get by? I think they tried. I think $2,500 a month is a super generous content budget. And one of the things you also have to realize, there's a great book by Amanda Palmer that's called The Art of Asking. A big part of success is you've got to go out and constantly. Now, I understand that, like, the mob occasionally, you know, said, hey, let's, I want to buy a microphone or whatever. No, no, no. Like, you need, like, if you get access to something like 100 Thieves, you've got to be, like, up in that grill. Like, you got to be at that compound, like, every day, right? Just like being in the happening, like, sitting around, uh, talking to people that go through there trying to get connected to nature you got to take every opportunity to 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 really reach out and I, and I guarantee like based on these hours that that they really didn't do that right um it's it, it's tough to say because to require that level of initiative from like a 20 year old kid is is sort of unrealistic but that is why this is so rare the the success stories that you hear are the people that put 100 hours a month, 200 hours a month, 250 hours a month, like in Hassan Ami or Amaran, uh, Hassan Abi or Amrant's case, you know, just like right over here. I, I, I'm filming this video at 2.45 in the morning because I put in the work, right? This is after Novo. Um, here's Amrant sitting here doing ASMR. Here's SVAN, right? Here's Asmongold on his alternate account. Here's XQC playing slots, right? All these guys have been active for like 12 hours today. 12 hours every day, seven hours, seven days a week, 12 hours every day. That's what it takes. You may not like it, right? Like, like you may say, well, like the, you know, uh, like it sucks. Yeah. But that's how the world is built. The world is built. Everybody has to put in the time to work hard. There is literally no free lunch. And this was kind of a free lunch, (laughs) right? Like, like, like I, I just, I, I take issue with the specific terminology of like, we had to skip meals. And it's like, I, 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 feel, I feel bad because oh, I know there's gonna be a large amount of people that like super demonize 100 Thieves and they're like, oh, like this corporation, this big corporation like could have done so much more. But the corporation, and this, this is not gonna hit with many people, so just give it a chance, okay? A corporation, is not, we always think of like the corporation, like Twitch or YouTube or whatever. Corporations are comprised of people, people that work at a company that get paid by that company, whose livelihood is dependent on that company, who support family, dogs, cats, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, friends, all like, like a corporation isn't just like a floating entity that is just like soulless. It's it's like 100 Thieves is like a group of people. Like a lot of people just got laid off from 100 Thieves because times are getting tough in esports. We made a video about that a little while back. It's hard, right? So like you have to make, as a CEO of one of these organizations, of any organization, you have to make tough decisions when somebody isn't producing the ROI, return on investment, that they ought be. At the very least, each one of your employees should be making back what they cost the company. So if, if someone is costing you more then the then you're to keep them on than what they're adding value to like generally an employee should be making like three to five x their value 
in, in a company. If they're like in the case of the mob, for two years they were costing a hundred thieves more than they were giving the company. That's not sustainable, and, and and that filters down to all of those people that are trying to make this thing happen, right? To make this corporation happen, and and, and you can't you can't do that. Like you you can't keep running a business that way. Um, or all of those people are going to be out of a job. Layoffs are going to happen, and it's going to be a lot of an unfair situation. Now I know it's hard to take this perspective if you are if you've never run a company before. And you are, and, 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 and like you just haven't seen that. Um, it's really easy to demonize the um, the big corporation that makes the millions of dollars. But that's like the, the real truth of it is that as a as a executive, you've got to make really hard decisions about who lives and who dies at these companies. And I think the mob was a really hard decision for Dan Schott to make because he was clearly very attached to these people, um, and he wanted them to succeed. Now, did, could he have done more? Sure. And that's like Frosty's argument is like, you could have done more. You could have been a mentor. You could have, I mean, like you're running a $500 million company. Like you give them a salary, you give them a content budget, you give them dedicated staff who will answer them and they've got to take it. They've got, at that point, they've got to work every single second to make that success um, happen or that's it. So my hope is that like nobody is that, that, that watches this is too offended um, and, and, and kind of comes back and says, okay, like, all of these people here, here. Here's here's you know kind of the silver lining here. Everybody in the mob is like what? Not even twenty five. I don't even know how old they are. I'm guessing. I mean, you've got so long. <laughs> to, like you've got you have so much time. You can you can step back from this and just be like, all right, like um, I didn't make this happen this time. I'm gonna put in. I don't know a thousand hours this year uh, of, of broadcasting plus YouTube videos uh, this time around, and I'm gonna become a successful content creator. If you really want this, right? Um, then you put in the time and you earn it. But as we saw in the um, in the stats, it, you know, even if you combined every channel, because I accounted for that over a two year period, uh, even if you account for the internet that you didn't have, like even if like, like you just didn't put in the time, which is okay. Like like you know, um, it's really hard. They they always say that youth is wasted on the young, right? It's really hard to work. <laughs> I get it, <laughs> right? Um, I played video games when I was that age um, endlessly. I played EverQuest one for uh, ever i mean like literally like 80 90 hours a week and i got like a c average in school and like it was only like 27 where i was like i gotta do something and step it up and i really decided to work but after i made that decision then i really went forward and i and i did it i made it happen and now i'm here and and, and like uh great i sacrificed a ton for that and every single person that like vibes with nade shot is doing that because they they've also either sacrificed especially the ogs in esports Nothing is going to come to you for free, and it frustrates us as executives and as OG people who built the foundations of esports to look at players who are getting paid like 60K, not returning the ROI for the company. I look at players that are making two to three million a year on the LCS teams that will never make that ROI back for the company, and eventually they'll get their come of its too, as I have made in previous videos. But what you take away from this is I, I, I did have an opportunity, um, I probably learned a lot by going out there, being on my own, and doing some scary stuff. I took an L, I failed a little bit. Okay, I'll build it back up, I'll come back strong, and I'll work even harder. That's what I hope everybody in the mob learns from this situation. And from people that are watching this and, and, and have looked at this full analysis and um, kind of like thought about it, where I hope you end up is um, give 100 Thieves like the credit that they're due. They, they, they are, in my opinion, the, the number one esports organization in 2022. And uh, they've worked very hard to get to where they are. And they've done so, I, I think, as ethically as possible. N this is not a phase situation where I have personally made videos on this channel. Uh, I can't believe phase is still in business. I, I, I just, I can't believe it. I, they, I can't believe they have a SPAC. I can't believe they've gone public. I, I don't know when that is coming due. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, the amount of stuff they do <laughs> that, that uh, it, it is just crazy. Um, that, that like there are so many esports orgs that do not run their business ethically, that it frustrates me to look at a hundred thieves that has tried every step of the way to really be an ethical organization and take care of its players and staff, um, to kind of like come out of the gate, getting flamed for this. I, I think I think they've really worked hard. I think like they've put in the time. I know a lot of people over there, and and, and I think I'm confident in saying that. So I hope everybody uh, takes that away from this, and uh, you know we can move forward from this with a better understanding of like how esports works. Um, going forward in esports, it's going to get worse before it gets better. 
So like as of the time of this recording, we are just on the cliff's edge of a recession, and a lot more of these player salaries are not going to make sense. And it's not just going to be content creators. It's going to be people that are playing in leagues. Okay, It's going to happen first with like OWL and with CDL, where it doesn't make any sense to have a team. And then it's going to hit CSGO, and then it's going to hit the LCS, and like, and then some, and then it's going to like that explosion is going to hit, um, like FGC and like other places, right? But the ROI is eventually going to have to be there. You have to make the money that you spend back for the company. It's just how it works. Otherwise, the company can't run. So we're going to see more of that. It's not the last video on something like this, but uh, hopefully everybody has a better understanding of esports as a result of this. If you do, leave a comment in the section down below. Thanks for coming out for my video, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.